And welcome to Elmaden Neighborhood Church online worship service. So glad to have you join us uh, with us today on this Sunday morning. My name is Jordan Wong. I'm the pastor here and uh, so glad that we can worship God together, uh, even though we are apart. Uh, usually we have, uh, we've been having outdoor services uh, today because uh, the weather, it's cold and it uh, looks like it's going to start raining uh, soon. So uh, we're doing uh, just online only. So it's uh, just me uh, alone uh, here in the church with uh, our tech team, which is Pearl and Lyndon um, and, uh, and all of you at home. Uh, so let us know that you're there. Go ahead. If you're watching this uh, on Facebook Live or Facebook later, go ahead and uh, say hello. Put a comment in there. Smiley face, thumbs up. Some of you guys are watching this uh, on the website or uh, through other means. Uh, so glad to have you here. We are worshiping God together. Uh, no matter what is going on in your life, in our community, in our world, God is still good all the time. 
And so we praise him. And, and uh, by lifting up our voices in worship, uh, by, by praying to him, by uh, reading his word, it draws us closer to him. It puts us more in alignment uh, with the reality of what's going on, the true reality that God is in control and he is working his purposes no matter what we see or experience around us. Uh, and so we need that. We need that reminder uh, to know who he is and that no matter what is going on, it can still be well with our soul. So let me pray for us, and uh, then we are going to uh, worship God together. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your consistency. You are the same yesterday, today, and always. Let us um, tap into you right now. Uh, um, God, with all, everything around us being like shifting sands and turning around, even ourselves, that sometimes we cannot trust ourselves in our own reactions. We can only trust in you. And no matter what's going on, we can put our faith and our hope in you, and it can be well with our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me invite you uh, to stand where you are in your, your home or uh, wherever you're at. It's a just great sometimes to change your posture or to kneel um, or to be in a place where you can worship God as we sing together. Let's sing praises to the Lord. When peace like a river flows When pain like sea billows roll Whatever my lot may be You have come to set me free Through it all, through it all are on you through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all my eyes are on you and it is well with me Be it for me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see In this mountain that's in front of me We'll be thrown into the midst of the sea Through it all, through it all my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all my eyes are on you and it is well it is
it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me.
You are a child of God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you that we are who you say we are. Not who the world says we are, not who we think we are, not who we try to be. We are your children called out by you because you love us. Thank you, God. May we walk in our identity as sons and daughters of the King of Kings and of the Lord of Lords because of what you have done through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you are standing, go ahead and be seated. Uh, but you're probably in your living room anyway, so, you know, do whatever you want to do. But it's uh, good to, uh, to be together and, uh, and worshiping together uh, online. Uh, and uh, if you uh, uh, are connected, go ahead and, and, uh, and say hello and, and uh, encourage each other throughout the service. Uh, go ahead and uh, give an amen or an alleluia at different points uh, and, uh, and encourage one another uh, in faith. That's what uh, we, we long to do. I want to thank uh, uh, Mary and uh, Allison and Mark uh, for leading us in worship. Uh, they we're not actually here uh, the, uh, today. They were at some point that they had pre-recorded that, uh, and uh, it's so good. So appreciative of our worship teams continuing to uh, to record and make music uh, so that we can worship together. We are finding ways to stay connected through small groups uh, that are meeting outdoors in good weather and online and over Zoom and WebEx and stuff like that. So if you're not plugged into a group, go ahead and uh, let us know and we'll connect you. Uh, we're also um, uh, uh, having people that have been joining the church and being a part of the church uh, during this time. And if you want to find out more about the church, we're going to be having a new members class coming up soon in the next week or so. And I've reached out to those who have shown interest uh, in wanting to be a part of a new membership class uh, so that we can pick a date that works for everybody. So if you're interested in that, let me know, put it in the comments or shoot me an email uh, and we'll get you as a part of that, uh, that group to find out more. What is the church really about? What does it mean to join uh, as a member uh, and then we're also going to be having our annual meeting which usually we have in February this year it's going to be in March uh, March 14th uh, on a Sunday uh, and uh, we'll do that over zoom as a way just to update everybody what's been going on in the church and uh, electing uh, uh, different ministry positions uh, for 2021 as well um, God is at work in our church um, and uh, and moves us forward together and uh, so the only way that happens is staying, staying connected and staying close uh, to one another. So keep that up um, and uh, know that we look to the Lord together. And as much as there has been disruption in this world and in our lives, um, some things never change. And that's God himself. And that's us being able to follow after him, to worship him, to serve him and others. We love God. We love others. We make disciples. I'm standing in front of our big banner. If you know our, our church, you know that, that uh, or just ha having part of it here. Others, some of you may just say, why does it just say others behind them? But you know, we love God, we love others, and we make disciples. And that doesn't stop. Nothing can stop you from serving God, from loving God. Um, and we do that in multiple ways. And, and some of those is you being present right here. Others is being engaged, serving others. Another aspect uh, that, that no one can stop you from doing is giving, giving to God. It's an aspect of worship um, that we have, uh, that God has given to us uh, as, a, as a gift, that we have the ability to um, use our time, our talent, and our finances to honor God. So don't stop doing that uh, as well. Even though we're not in a place where we're going to give you an offering plate to put you know, money in, uh, still give to the Lord. You can give uh, to your church uh, here, Almaden Neighborhood Church, uh, at almadenchurch.org Almaden slash give. Uh, and there's giving options, whether you do that online, whether you mail in a check, um, all those kind of things. Um, but continue to do that because uh, that's the way you honor God and worship him. And then as you give through your local church, uh, allows us to continue to serve you and continue to serve our community. It's uh, who we are. It's what we do. So let's uh, continue to do that. Another thing that we do is pray. We have prayer meeting every Wednesday night at 7.30 um, on Zoom. Uh, let us know if you're interested in that. We'll give you the Zoom link for that. Um, but we also just continue to pray uh, together. So let's do that now. Let me pray for us. It'll be my words, but all our hearts united as we come to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we acknowledge you as our King, as our Savior, and as our Lord. Would you lead us forward in you? God, we lift up our world and those around us. There's so much need. And so uh, we pray right now um, for an end to this virus. God, we pray for uh, those that are sick 
and uh, those that are exposed. We pray for healing and strength. We pray for, um, for uh, the, the doctors and the scientists that, uh, that are continuing to study and move things forward. God, we pray for this vaccine, um, that it be effective, that it be distributed well. Um, God, we, we pray for, uh, for you to help us emerge um, from where we are at uh, right now, God. We're trusting in you and in your power and strength. We pray for those that have lost loved ones due to this virus, um, or even just in this past year, um, lost loved ones due to different uh, illnesses or, or, or situations, God. Uh, we pray, as many are going through grief and pain right now, that you would be the comforting one. God, we pray for those that have, have lost jobs that are struggling financially right now. Um, God, that you would provide and that, that you would lead us forward. We pray for um, ourselves that we may be able to, to be an answer to, to those that are, are praying, that we may be able to help those in need uh, in practical ways and in real ways. God, I pray for those that are, are struggling uh, emotionally, uh, mentally, spiritually, um, that the drain of this uh, pandemic and the sheltering in place and, and all of this stuff has had, uh, among other things, among other life situations, um, God, there are people that are just really hurting right now. And God, some of the, maybe some of my brothers and sisters listening right now that are just holding on and even turning on this broadcast just to, to get some hope. God, I pray that you would be that hope, that you would be that comfort, uh, that, that you would be the light in the darkness to let us know that things will not always be as they are right now. We look towards you to the time where we will be with you forever and, and that you are the light in the darkness. Be the hope for the hopeless. God, I pray for all of us that, that uh, I thank you for those that are doing well. As they're hearing everything else going on, they're saying, hey, at least we're not sick and we're doing okay and we're fine. Thank you so much, God. Would you use each of us not just to hold on to, to what we're doing, but to use what we have for the benefit of others. Thank you, God. We are grateful. We are so grateful for your goodness and for your grace. We're thankful that you've given us what we have to be able to benefit others. May we do that and engage in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get into God's Word this morning. We're going through a series um, in the book of Colossians. Uh, today we are finishing up Colossians chapter 1 in verse 24 and will uh, carry us in to uh, Colossians chapter 2. Uh, man, you know, as we're just kind of in this season that has just been going on, on and on. I know it's taken a toll on a lot of people. And uh, I, I know just going back to a couple of months ago, I think it was October or November, I was um, talking with a group of, of friends in a, a Zoom meeting and uh, we were just going through and saying, all right, what's your kind of word for the month? Like what, what kind of describes what your experience of the month was? And I forget exactly what I said, but I, but I think I said uh, uh, weary hopefulness or something like that. Um, and uh, we went through, and then one of my friends, you know, later said, you know, Jordan, we, we do this, and every month, um, e each of your words, uh, they, they either have the word weary, tired, or fatigue in it. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that sounds about right. And he asked me this, he says, when's the last time that you were not tired? I'm like, when's the last time I wasn't tired? I had to think about it, and I thought, I said, February. February 2020, that was the last time I was not tired. I think when we were, uh, took a family vacation to Hawaii right before the pandemic uh, uh, started. And I'm like, I think that was the last time I was not tired. Um, and it just made me think about that. I'm like, wow, from at that point, from February in, or from March until October, November, um, I felt like I was just in a constant state of fatigue and weariness. And part of that is, you know, being home with a toddler that doesn't stop and we can't take her anywhere and leave her anywhere. <laughs> um, so that alone just kind of creates the fatigue and the tiredness and, and, and uh, just months of trying to move forward with things, uh, both at church and home and stuff like that and, and hitting roadblocks and we can do this and we can't do this and we're trying that. And it just kind of created this, this sense of, of fatigue. And it helped me even just saying that, answering that, uh, it made me more aware of like, all right, what are the things that, that I can do um, to lead me out of fatigue and out of tiredness and, and ways of rest and ways of, uh, uh, and what is energizing, what is life-giving and paying more attention. And since then, I'm happy to report, I've actually had some days where I'm not so tired. 
Uh, I've put some things in place in my own life to say, all right, how do I connect back to Christ? How do I connect back in, in that energizing way? And I, I felt like I'm walking with him throughout, but just kind of feeling, you know, tired. And then also learning that sometimes we're just tired. Sometimes the, the, the work in front of us is, is a work that, that, that God gives to us, and it, it takes energy and it takes strength and, and, and understanding that. And so we're going to kind of look at that together uh, today in what Paul says as he talks about the work that, that he does. And we're going to get some insight uh, in, into what it means to find our energy in the Lord to do the work of God for his own purposes. So Colossians uh, chapter 1 verse 24 says this, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. So here, Paul is saying, all right, this is what I'm doing. He's writing this letter to the church of, at Colossae, um, uh, to a, a church that, as far as we know, he had not visited or spent time with, but he was a part of planting, a part of uh, connecting, and he's writing this letter. Uh, and uh, throughout it, he's reminding them of the core of what things are about, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's who Jesus is. The gospel that there is good news, bad news, and great news. Good news that God loves you, creates you for a purpose. Bad news is we've broken that relationship because of our sin and our own rebelliousness. We cannot get back on our own. The great news is Jesus Christ does it for us, and he replaces our sin with his perfection and gives us his grace. And, and Paul says this, he says, I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. Really, Paul? <laughs> you rejoice in suffering? I mean, it's one thing to kind of get through it and to know what to do the thing that you need to do. But Paul says, I rejoice in the difficult work, in the pain that I'm doing, in the fact that, that he's going through this and he's being persecuted, he's being beaten, he's being jailed for the sake of the gospel. But he's saying, it's worth it. It's worth it to me because what I'm doing has produced hope, has produced fruit in you. That there is this church and this church is being encouraged and, and they are moving forward and they're finding faith in Jesus and their eternities are changed. And Paul says, because of that, it's okay that I am tired, beyond tired, that I'm suffering, that I'm enduring pain, that I'm going through it. He says, it, it's, it's okay. In fact, I rejoice in that. I fill up in my flesh what was lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for you, for the church. Verse 25 says this, I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so Paul is saying, this is my purpose, my commission that was given to me to, to, to go and to share with you this mystery. And, and I, I love this, you know, um, that throughout Colossians, he re refers to the gospel and the truth as the mystery or the secrets. Uh, and, and it comes out of, you know, in that day that, that people thought that, that all the things that were spiritual were, were, were mysterious and secrets and only certain people had them. And you had to kind of like uh, be a certain person to, to, you could know the secrets. And if once you found the secrets, you would keep them. But Paul says, no, the secrets are being revealed. And this is the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the secret. It's not what we have to attain. It's not who we have to be. It's not where we have to, what we have to achieve. But Christ in you, that's our hope of glory, our hope of, for the future, our hope for today. And then Paul says this, verse 28. He is the one we proclaim admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. All right, these verses have been strong 
for me, especially for me in, in, in the fall when I was going through just like weariness and fatigue and like, all right, I'm holding on, Lord, what are you doing? And, and I came across this verse, verse 21, to this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And, and so Paul says that he strenuously contends, that, that, that he works hard, that he's fighting, he's straining, he's strenuously contending, straining forward. And I don't know about you, that sounds exhausting. I don't want to do that. I don't want to strenuously contend. I, I, I want to uh, relaxingly recline. <laughs> for, for me in my life, I, I feel like at, at, at the, the point where I'm tired or where, when I, I'm weary, I don't want to work harder. I want to work less. I'm looking for the time where there's the vacation, where there's the break. Some of you are looking forward to retirement and like what life is going to be like. Others of you, even now, you're, you're starting to, to, to think about, hey, maybe we should move to another place so we could retire and, and life would be easier for us there. And, and here, it, it really strikes me that, that Paul, when he kind of paints the life that he has, that he is rejoicing in, it's not a life of rest. It's not a life uh, that's easy. It's a life of strenuously contending. And, and, and here, there's a balance where, where we can see there's many things that, that's, uh, that's going on here that Paul says, I strenuously contend with all the energy that Christ so powerfully works in me. And so what he's saying is that he's working hard. He's moving things forward. There's this straining forward. There's this fight every day. But he's doing it not with his own power, but with the power of Christ. And, and in these, these verses, 28 and 29, there's this flow of these three things that, that are happening. There's energy, action, and purpose. Energy, action, and purpose. And, and uh, you know, we are kind of linear people. We kind of want to think, you know, one or the other to say, okay, I have the energy, I have the strength to do what I need to do, the action. So then I'll do that action, and then that, that action will give me purpose. And honestly, as I look at this, I don't think it's that linear, but I think that they're all linked in together. That they're all linked in together. And, and the, the reason why maybe we're feeling wiped out or tired or lost in different ways, it's because we're not engaging in all of these together. To be able to have energy and strength, vitality, action, doing the work, strenuously contending, and within that purpose. Because remember, Paul says, to this end, for the purpose that I have, I have a reason for doing what I'm doing. And, and that reason is the gospel, Jesus Christ himself, and he knows his calling. Paul says, my calling is to go out and to share this, to build up the church of Jesus Christ so that you may all become mature. I have a reason. I have a larger purpose for what I am doing. And we, as people, need all of that together. Energy, action, and purpose. Because if we're missing a part of that, then we're kind of missing all of it. If we have energy and action, but without purpose... That leads to disillusionment. Energy and action without purpose is delusion, uh, disillusionment. Uh, uh, so it, it's the, the, the and, which is also discouragement, also despair and depression. Because if I have the strength, I, I want to do what I, I want to do, and then I can do it, but I have no purpose. At, at the end of that, we can just become discouraged. If you don't have purpose and you're moving forward, even the things that you accomplish, when we get there, you realize that there's nothing there. It's been said that the worst thing to do is to, to get to the top of the ladder and realize the ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. And, and right now, I think in, in COVID times and in this year, it, it's really been tested. If there have been certain things in your life that you've been working for in your job and in your family and all these kind of things, and then now a lot of it is shut down, then you realize that you've lost purpose. Maybe you were working so hard to get into to school, to get into a college, and then it's like, now I can't go, or the, the college I'm going to, it's, it's different than what it was meant to be, or you were trying to move forward in your business, and the business was going in a certain way, and now it's shut down financially. 
There, there are certain things that, that, that were, were happening and then now it has stopped. And the things that we thought were a big enough purpose maybe are not a big enough purpose. And without purpose, we go to despair, we go to discouragement or even depression. Maybe for you, you have a larger purpose and, and you have the energy to say, okay, I want to do that. But if you have energy and purpose without action, that leads to frustration. To say, I have the big idea. I know what I'm called to do. I know what I'm meant to do. And I have the strength to go and do it, but I just can't get it done. I keep trying and I keep trying and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. I can't do the thing. And it's frustrating. And again, during this time, there's a lot of things we cannot, some of us can't do the thing that we know we want to do, and it can just be frustration. But maybe you're doing it, you have the action, you have the purpose, but you just don't have the energy. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do, I have the larger purpose, but I just don't have the energy, and that's just exhaustion. It's just, just tired. Like, I, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. And sometimes it, that also can be shame. It's like, oh, I should be doing this and I'm supposed to be doing this, but I'm not doing it. And, and for you, maybe you're like, hey, I, I'm good. I'm doing the thing. I'm, I'm feeling the fulfillment of who I'm meant to be. That's great. Others of you say, actually, there's a bunch of those. Like, I don't have energy. I don't have action. I'm not doing it. And I don't know what I would do anyway. I have no energy, no action, and no purpose. Maybe, maybe it's a combination of those where it's like I feel, you know, I'm feeling discouraged and I'm feeling frustrated and I'm feeling exhausted. And within that, we tend to counter that to just say, well, just try harder, right? Just figure it out. And, and, and at different points, people will say, well, th just, just lean into one of those. Just find your overall purpose or, or just go out and do something. Whatever it is, just, just make something happen or just tend to your own energy. Take care of yourself, eat better and, and, and sleep better and take care of yourself so you can have more energy and do all those things. Yeah, we can lean in to all of that. You can try all, uh, all of that, but unless your energy and your action and your purpose roots from something bigger than you, it will always fall short. It will always fall short. And, and that's why Paul says all of this comes from the Lord. And, and it comes from the larger purpose. There, there's a bigger story going on than just your story. And when you're caught up in just your own story, it, it's going to be small, and then you're going to be drawing from small and limited resources, and it's going to wear out. But if we can step back and see there's the larger picture, there's the bigger picture, that God has a bigger story. It's the good news, the bad news, the great news, and you're a part of that. And it's big enough for you. And Paul, you see the passion that he has because he knows that there's a larger story. And that's what God is doing in the world, and he's a part of it. And you're invited to that. And I, let me encourage you to, to take time to really look at your purpose. What's, what is my purpose? What am I doing in this world? What, what has God called me to do? Paul had a grip on that to say, my life is to be able to, to receive this gospel and to give it away and to share it with others. And every day, every day, there's nothing that keeps you from following God. Every day, there's an open door for you to be able to, to seek him, follow him, and share his love with others. Maybe not in a way like Paul and planning churches and, and, and preaching and, and writing letters and all that stuff, maybe, but in, even if it's in a small way, tapping into that purpose and, and knowing that comes from him and then being able to do the work. Once you have that purpose, no, I'm going to do the work God has called me to do, even if it's hard and if it's difficult. Paul says, I'm suffering because of this. I'm strenuously contending. I'm fighting with all the power that I have. But where he says, but that power doesn't come from me. I just love that line. I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And church family, that's letting you know that you can give it all. You can all lay it all out on the field. You can put everything you have because God is giving you his energy. The energy comes from him. And if we are tapped into the purposes of God, we're doing the work of God, then we draw from the energy of God, the strength of Christ. 
and, and that you can do the work without using your own strength. You use his strength. It's like having the extra battery pack on. You're not drawing from your own power. You're drawing from his power. And, and that's the call. That, that's how we move forward. And even though we, we may be depleted from our own strength, we're actually not tired. We're not weary. We're not worn out because the energy comes from him. This is what it means for us to have our energy, our action, and our purpose, that we can live as people that have the larger p- picture in mind, that can go and work and, and give all of our energy, all of our strength to what's in front of us, drawing from the energy of Christ. And, and all of these things, it's tied up into real world stuff, right? Like we have our own energy, uh, and, and you may, may be saying, well, that, that's fine, but my, my energy I just don't have the strength. And maybe there's physical things going on with you. Maybe there's emotional stuff. There's other things. And so we, do, we have to tend to our own physical and emotional uh, and mental strength as well. You know, it does matter what we eat and, you know, getting enough sleep and exercising and all that kind of stuff in our physical energy. But at a certain point, what allows us to do all of that is knowing Christ's power in us. Because if you're just trying to stay healthy and just trying to do the thing to, to, to make it through and then just trying to do the work at the end of the day, it's not going to be enough to sustain. But if you know that Christ is in you, he is the hope of glory. He loves you. He cares for you. He has a greater purpose for you. He wants to use you in this world to move his kingdom forward. Well, then your health really does matter. And it's not just so that you feel good. It's not just so that you have a couple more years to your life, but because God is working in you. And if he's working in you, then he's going to give you the strength to keep going. It doesn't all depend on you. You don't have to draw all the energy and all the resources from yourself. You draw it from him. That's what Paul is doing. That's how he lives his life. Colossians uh, 2, verse 1, he continues. He says, I want you to know how hard I'm contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all those who have not met me personally. He says, well, let you know, it's not easy. I'm working hard. I'm putting it all on the line. I'm giving it all. For what? For a purpose. Verse 2, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So what he's saying is it's not just the fancy words. It's not just what other people, you know, say. It's living out that life day by day and moment by moment. And, and it's a life that is given for you, that, that we can have that energy from Christ that, into that action daily, doing that work in a larger purpose. In reality, not just in, in, in thought, not just in theory. This is the life for us to live. This week, uh, I uh, got to, to uh, have a, a great conversation with, uh, with Kent Wilson. He's part of uh, our church. He and his wife, uh, Lisa, their daughter, Ashley, they've been uh, a part of uh, Allen and Neighborhood Church for, I don't know, we were talking about like eight years, something like that, a good, nice, good amount of time. Uh, and, uh, and talking to, to Kent is just a, he's just a fantastic guy. He's come, uh, his story uh, is one where he can share like, hey, his life and where it was before, but that he says the turning point has been having an actual relationship with God. And as I talked with him, uh, I just said, you know, what's God been doing in your life, you know, during this time? And uh, he kind of lit up and shared, you know, it's, it's been pretty wild. Uh, so, so Kent is an electrician um, by, by nature, by trade. Um, and so during COVID times, all construction shut down uh, in the beginning for a good period of time. So there's no work and the communication isn't good of kind of like, when is work coming back and what does that look like? And so eventually, um, after months of no work, he was able to, to start working uh, again. And, and Kent is, uh, has been an electrician for a long time, so he's a foreman. He has a lot of experience. Uh, but finally, when the jobs opened up, it was just kind of whatever job uh, would be there. And uh, he was sharing with me that, that one of the jobs uh, that they said, all right, you're going to be the lighting foreman. You're going to install all the light fixtures, and you'll be the foreman uh, having journeymen work under you. He said, that's great. But he shows up at the site, and when he shows up, it's just a dirt lot. 
There's no building. He's like, wait a minute, my job is to be the lighting foreman to install all the lights. There's not even a building here. And they're like, oh yeah, actually we need you to just uh, to work and do the undergrounding and lay the conduit and do all this stuff, um, but not as a foreman, just as a journeyman. He's like, well, this is not really what I, what I do. Um, you know, I used to do that, but like, okay. And so he did that and he, and he just kind of kept working and doing, doing the jobs. Um, but he shared with me, he was just kind of getting frustrated and getting annoyed and kind of saying the, the sense of our purpose. Like this is, you know, I'm doing this job. It's, I don't really like doing this job. It's not a, a larger purpose. What am I doing? And just kind of getting, getting frustrated and getting discouraged, getting disillusioned. Uh, and then he said, you know, I, I know I need to just lean back into to God. So he started to pray driving in on his way to, uh, to, to work, just saying, all right, God, thank you. Let me, I say thank you for what you've given to me. Thank you for, uh, for uh, all the good things that I'm able to experience. Help me to surrender this to you, to not try to do my own thing, but I trust you for your purpose. So just today, just show me what you want to do. I'm, I'm going to not try to, to, to do all the things I want to do, but if you just have me as a journeyman serving this place, I'll do it. That next day, the, then his boss called him in and said, all right, we're ready for you to be a foreman. And he's like, wow, the day that I surrendered and said, I'm okay doing this job, then God puts me in the job that I wanted. And then as it moved on, it's like, actually, the job still isn't quite what I want it to be, and, and, and there's frustration. Um, but then every morning, he just shared, you know, as I pull in with my truck, I just stand outside the job and take a moment and pray and say, God, I give this to you. I'm thankful for what you've given to me. I give to you. Help me to just see what I don't see. Show me what I don't see that I may be able to be a part of your bigger purpose. And then that day as he's, he's leaving, there's a security guard uh, there on the site that starts talking to him and just starts a conversation with Kent and just opens up and starts sharing about his own frustrations and, and, and the, the dreams that he has. And Kent's able to speak to him and encourage him. And this guy's you know, is encouraged because of Kent. And Kent leaves a job saying, oh, maybe I'm here for that. Maybe God kept me in this job so I could talk to this one guy. And then the next day, as, as the days go on, there's other guys that, that, that start opening up to Kent and sharing about the difficult things that they're going through. And Kent can say, hey, I used to be there. And what changed in my life is my relationship with God. And talking to Kent, he's like, I never thought I'd be that guy. Like, I never thought I'd be the guy that would tell other people about my relationship with God and, and point them in that direction, but it's happening. And then every day as he's continuing the, the, these just kind of daily prayers, things open up where, where the crew that, that uh, is working for him are kind of the dream team of all the guys he's worked with over the years, and particularly guys uh, that have faith in Christ that he's talked to. And he steps back and, and he said, you know what, even now, I still don't love the job that I'm doing. It's not the job I want to do, but I love the people I work with. I've got my God squad. I've got the people that God has brought around me, and I'm finding my purpose here. This is what it means for us to live in, to draw our energy, our strength from the Lord into action, doing the work, knowing that there's a larger purpose. And I was encouraged by, by, by Kent just, you know, telling me that story. And he's still in the, in the path and along the way, it hasn't got it figured out. None of us have got it figured out. But we are at our best when we draw our strength, when we stop. And, and that turn point that he shared with me was just, remembering to just stop and pray and ask God, show me what I don't see. And maybe that's how it is for you. I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're doing great. Maybe you're in that sweet spot of life and serving and, and joy. Maybe you're struggling with discouragement or depression or frustration or exhaustion. Colossians 1, 28. He is the one we proclaim. It's not about us, it's him. He is the one we proclaim admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. Verse 29, to this end, for this purpose, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Friends, let me encourage you to strenuously contend. The fight is real. The battle is real. It's not easy, but Fight that fight, move forward, do the work that God has called you to do with the energy that he gives you. It's his energy. It's not your own. If you're trying to draw from your own strength, you're going to get wiped out and, and, and you're going to be fatigued all the time. But if you draw from his strength, 
you'll still be tired sometimes. You'll, you'll, you'll still be weary sometimes. But the energy and the strength that comes from God never fails. Where do you lack today? As you come to the Lord, is it a greater sense of purpose? Then ask him for that. And say, God, would you give me that, that sense of purpose to be able to really know what, why I'm here, what I'm doing, the larger picture? Is it action? Is it saying, I, I just, I know what I need to be doing, but I'm just not doing it. I, I, all right, today, help me to have the strength to do the things I know I need to do. Or is it energy where just say, I, I, I'm doing it, but I, I'm just barely making it. But I draw my strength and my power from you. Let's do that now. Let's pray. And wherever it is that you lack, whatever it is you need from the Lord, just seek him and ask him, and he will give it freely. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that your purpose is enough. You are big. You have a, a larger plan and we get to be a part of it. Thank you, God. We confess that, that we are tired because we run on our own power and our own strength. So today, God, may we come to you. I pray for all those right now that, that have honestly lost the sense of, of purpose and maybe never had it. So right now, God, may we, we remember your calling of your gospel. Remember that we are a part of the great story of great new, good news, bad news, great news. That we have received the great news of the redemption of forgiveness through Jesus Christ and that we get to share that with others. That's why we're still here. We have our purpose. We're still here uh, because we have received your grace and we get to give that grace away and that love away to others. Help us to tap into it, that purpose. For those where it's action, where, where they're just saying, I, I'm not quite sure what to do. I have the larger purpose, but I'm not quite sure what to do next. Or, or I know what to do, but I just can't do it. God, would you help us to know just what that next step is? And for energy, God, uh, may it be that, that for those of us that, that lack, may we come to you. Honestly, God, in this time period right now, there are so many other places that we turn to for our energy. We know we're tired. And so uh, many have uh, turned to other things. And so, God, it, it, for those right now that we admit, we know that in this time we've been making bad lifestyle and health choices. Um, God, instead, we turn to you. I, I pray uh, for, for those right now where knowing like during this time, we've been turning to too much alcohol, too much junk food, too much Netflix, uh, too much of these other things. Uh, Lord, right now, may we find freedom and liberation. May we turn away from that which we know is harmful and turn towards you, that our energy and our strength may come from you. Thank you, God. We worship you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The power and strength is from him, and the victory is his. If you feel like you're barely making it through, you feel like you've been somewhat defeated, take hope, take heart. The battle has already been won, and the victory is his. Let's sing this song together as Mary leads us in the song that the victory is God's. Let this be your song of response as you sing out, uh, and may it be your prayer from your heart. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crash to their knees as we rise up and worship. When trials unleash like a flood, the battle.
His name is unshaken. He is the source of power and of strength. He is the one that gives you purpose and action and energy. Receive this benediction, this blessing over your life that you may receive this now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you go from this time with purpose, action, and energy. May it not just be words, but, but may it be truth to your life. <laughs> may you be filled with the truth of the gospel. May you take your place in the story of good news, bad news, great news, and know that you stand with the victorious one. May you move forward from this day with a sense of purpose like no other, allowing you to strenuously contend and do the work before you with the energy that Christ so powerfully places in you. Go with that never-ending energy of Jesus Christ that he won for you through his death, through his resurrection, and through his ascension. May you go with the spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. May you go in his strength. Amen.